ultimately my views on packing efficiency. All right, now I feel that packing efficiency also has to be considered. Now suppose there are two enantiomers. Now two enantiomers producing same odor. Why? Why should it? Now first thing, very clear that two enantiomers would be fitting into two different sites. Now in these two different sites, it also depends upon its packing efficiency. Suppose this is the cavity and into this, this molecule has fit in. Now there's a void you see, there's, there's a void. All right, so how much is the void? Now if the void is, now in this case, the void is more. Now if I do like this, the void is less. Owing to less of void, this H2S molecule would be transferring its entire energy, nearly entire energy to the site and hence to the transducer. Whereas in this molecule, since it has lots of void, so it would be losing some energy vibrating inside, some energy to move around. All right, So it would lose some of its kinetic energy in moving around. Thus, it would not be transferring its entire energy to the site. So here the percentage of energy transferred to site would be much lesser than the energy transferred here. The percentage of energy transferred over here. This itself explains why packing efficiency is very much essential. Here the packing efficiency is pretty high. Here packing efficiency is pretty low going to lots of void present all right so that discriminates the energy difference all right now let's just get into a bit of uh, numerical factors these are two cavities of active sites connected to olfactory nerves via transducers all right now into these are fitted in two molecules now it's the same molecule but two enantiomers. All right, this is the R enantiomer and this is the S enantiomer. R enantiomer possesses four joules, whereas S enantiomer possesses five joules. These are the internal energies. And these internal energies are there owing to DOF that I presented in my earlier video. All right, DOF, that is degree of freedom. So based on it. Now, this fits in but leaves a void of 10%. This fits in leaves a void of 28%. Now, while calculation, what I did was I subtracted 10% of 4 joules from here, which comes to 0.4 joules. So, 4 joules minus 0.4 joule gives 3.6 joule. All right. Then here in this case, I subtracted 28% from 5 Joule. That comes to 1.4 Joule. So ultimately, 5 Joule minus 1.4 Joule gives 3.6 Joule. So in both the cases, the result is 3.6 Joule. Now this 3.6 Joule are provided to transducer. So transducers, transduces 3.6 joules to electrical impulse to olfactory nerves. Olfactory nerves carries these impulses to brain for decoding. So the result of decoding is the same. So both the enantiomers, since they have generated 3.6 joules as the result, so they also generate same electrical impulse and since same electrical impulse so both give same odor all right now why subtract 0.4 joules over here and 1.4 joules over here now see what happens is now this has got to travel 10% of this distance 
to supply energy to the cavity whereas this has to travel 28% to supply energy to this cavity as a result of which it's going to lose 10% of its total energy in this case it's going to lose 28% of its total energy and hence the subtractions all right mathematically i just tried to show you how two enantiomers going to this reason can produce same stimuli and same order all right now you may be wondering that how come if a molecule does not fit into cavity it can produce its effect that's really intriguing we always assume that a lock opens via one specific key that's what is lock and key mechanism but then we have seen in movies that thieves they open a lock via just one pin or one, some sharp instrument fine same is the story over here let me brief you about some beta blockers which i had synthesized but i'm not concerned about synthesis but i'm concerned about their applications now practalol was the beta blocker which was used earlier and now it is atenolol practalol then propanol and atenolol i have synthesized chemoenzymatically the chiral molecules of these drugs now if we follow the theory of one specific key for a lock then practalol would have survived till date we have seen this in case of many drugs drug design in itself is done via sbdd structure based drug designing method so here what in case of beta blocker if i take the epichlorohydrin molecule was the same in all three drugs there are lots of beta blockers i am taking example of those drugs which i have synthesized all right now if i say practalol propanolol and atenolol all these three drugs had intermediate or the starting material was epichlorohydrin epichlorohydrin from this epichlorohydrin cl was replaced by isopropyl amine in all three cases whereas the epoxy of epichlorohydrin was opened by different groups in all three beta blockers as presented here would be explaining using propanolol and atenolol as my model all right this is epichlorohydrin which has carbon carbon oxygen epoxide linkage hydrogen 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 and this is the cl part and this is ch2 epichlorohydrin this is isopropylamine the isopropyl carbon ch3 ch3 ch isopropyl group attached to nh2 isopropyl amine in case of propanolol and atenolol this these two are condensed together epichlorohydrin and isopropylamine are condensed together so this side as i explained this side of condensation is the same in both the cases propanolol and atenolol so what basically happens is cl is replaced by the cl which was attached over here is replaced by isopropylamine group all right so this is common in case of practalol propanolol and atenolol but this part the molecules condensing over here are varied all right in case of propanolol the epoxide is opened up by alpha naphthol in case of atenolol epoxide is being opened by this hydroxy group of this is aromatic ring in fourth in fourth position we have hydroxy whereas in this position we have an acetamide linkage all right we call it as 2,4 hydroxy phenyl acetamide all right because at the second position this is acetic acid right in the so here 
one to to the second position is the amide so when we are talking of cavity now this part of the cavity is the same but here in case of propenolol we are finding this is the group which is attached over here and in case of atenolol we are finding this is the group which is attached over here from here and in this case from here now so one key for a lock does not work over here otherwise it would have been propenolol which would have been more effective till date but today what we use is condensation of this with this okay that is atenolol all right and that to chiral now all these things i have presented in my earlier videos all right the chemoenzymatic synthesis of atenolol and propenolol and pratenolol all right so my main contention over here is just to explain to yes this part of the key is same but this part of key is really very different we have got naphthyl group over here we just have one phenol group to which is attached acetamide all right so uh, my main purpose of showing this is sbdd structure based drug designing so we still have scope maybe furthermore new drugs are going to come where we'll find maybe this group would change further or maybe somewhere over here there would be some change to get better effect to get better packing efficiency so it's all based on packing efficiency the efficiency of we are talking in terms of drug or we are talking in terms of aroma or we are talking in terms of any other effect it's purely the packing efficiency which makes the difference so if it would have been one specific key for a lock then it would should have been pratenolol which should have been working till date but it's not so so same is the story over here also here also we find that even if the molecule does not fit perfectly into the site still it really does have its effect so we need to design via sbdd for getting better effect all right so so please don't bring this thought that i i have mentioned there that here the packing efficiency is low uh, still it's having its effect whereas their pack packing efficiency is high and both are having its effect yes if if packing efficiency is low it would definitely have its effect but as i explained the effect would be less that's the reason why we have scope for drug designing that's the reason why by changing groups we try to analyze what could be the shape or the structure of cavity in which these molecules are fitting in okay going to these reasons i feel that packing efficiency also has to be considered when we consider it for drug designing why do we feel that there's scope for developing a drug it's purely going to packing efficiency because we know that maybe some more groups are required some more more effective groups are required which would fit into the cavity and produce better effect so i feel that packing efficiency everywhere has to be considered here also in this case i feel that packing efficiency has to be considered all right now obviously i again repeat that these are my views i keep on thinking all this uh, my brain keeps on hovering around all these varieties of thoughts uh, no it may be sensible it may not be sensible but i have put in my logics into it and i feel that it could be considered i hope uh, you found these views quite interesting let's see what i have for my next video see you then